Hey, it's the Scotch Test Dummies. What are we doing? We got our top five bourbon slash American whiskeys. Mm, American, because it can be single malt, it can be Canadian even. You know, I had to th just thinking about that though. I think mine might be all bourbons. Really? Well, you know what? Let's find out. We're going to test it or number it. We'll say number it. <laughs> <laughs> and now uh, that I say that, one of them is not a bourbon. Oh, so. there you go. Okay. Well, you and were, I'm drinking it. You were all in there. I've got it in my glass. Around. Wow. I've got my, got my number one in my glass, and it's rich. Look how so rich is that is. Yeah. We both hey, pitched rich. It looks richer. That is. Look at that. It's like, um, it's like so, copper and iodine. These are our top fives of 2019. These are only whiskeys that we've tried. Bingo. So we can't Ooh, go off of other people's good. recommendations. Mm -hmm. um, I don't have any samples. I mean, I like to have bottles that we've done, bottles that yes. we've reviewed. Yeah, I've done the same. And that's kind of our standard deal because I've gotten great samples before, yeah. but that's to me not enough to... I might go search a bottle based on a sample. Yes. Yeah. But that that's about it. So who's gonna start? You wanna lead or you want me to lead off? Um, let me lead because my first one's a little bit weird and it's got a message behind it. Okay. So first thing is I was at the cask thief. It worked out mm -hmm. and I was able to meet Wes Jolly there. Now some people right off the bat are gonna go, blah, I can't find those anywhere, and they were particular for that event. You're right. I'm going to tell you what these are, and then I'm going to tell you what the weirdness is here. So this is the wise guy. So it's a cask you can select, and you taste from the cask. Then you can go buy these 350s. And this one is the Married Barrel. All right. My point is not these particular ones. By the way, the year before, I did pick one of these, and it was unbelievable. My point to this is to tell you there are so many distilleries all around the country, and I'm sure up in Canada, that are doing these types of different events. This particular event, the Cast Thief, they, they have a pig roast. There's a pig on a spit. Um, you get a little passport that tells you what these are, and then you go around and they have live music playing and different stuff. It's an event. And you get to try them, and then you can buy some. So this is not specific just for these, although these are great and they would fit. And I know you can't get these and then you're like, ah, you had to be at the thing. My point is, if there's one even within a couple states of you, all right, Colorado's a state over from us. If you can go to one of these, I don't care where it is. I don't care if it's Stranahan's, go. Not only are you hanging out with whiskey lovers in general, um, you're, you're, you're just getting this experience. It's part of that whole whiskey friendly fun thing going on. It's a whole new thing. Any, anything to say you've been coming. good. No, good mention. Um, you know, and you, those are your bottles. Mm -hmm. You've had those, you've sampled those a little bit more than me. I had them. They were good. I considered strand of hands. And if I had anything to throw in there in my list, I like what they are doing. I don't have any strand of hands in my list, but that is a good pick. Got it. And the idea that, there's distilleries. I mean, look what you've done at Iron Root Republic when they had their 50 year anniversary and they had the special release. There is just fun things going around. And if you can get to them, go. That's what this is. This is not these in particular. Well, it's go. I would say you probably won't find the cast thieves, but probably not. Try any strand of hands if you haven't tried. Sure, them. strand of hands is good. But my point here wasn't these particular bottles, it was go to these events that are happening around you. Whiskey shared is 10 times better. It just is. Wes Jolly had his whole family there. Now, part of that's the scam because he buys them all the tickets. It's good family time. Don't get me wrong, Wes. <laughs> yeah. But he can also then buy multiple bottles. Um, you know, he pays for the family to go and he can buy multiple bottles. And it's, and it's a wise thing. It's a fun thing. For him, it's a whole family fun. You're shot. <laughs> You're like, shut up. Moving on. Old Ezra, seven-year uh, barrel strength. Mm -hmm. uh, picked this up. Uh, surprised me. We've had the the Old Ezra uh, seven-year. Mm -hmm. It's good. Uh, you bump it up to the uh, the barrel strength version. It's what, 55, 57%? 58.5%. 58. Can I take a, uh, yeah, a bottle bet. pull? Oh, yeah. <laughs> sure. 58. Uh, this is a, a charcoal mellowed one. It's it's uh, been distilled. It's been aged, and then they charcoal mellow it. Uh, the smoothness there—you get a little bit of that charcoal filtering in mm -hmm. it. 
uh, but it's really nice. Uh, and it is a uh, Kentucky straight bourbon whiskey as well. That is so. good. It's got a lot of the uh, the oaky influences in it. Mm -hmm. Yep. And I got some in my, my mustache beard area for later. It's my number five. Old Ezra, seven. Woo! Barrel strength. Straight up. Nice and easy. And uh, $45. 45 Dollar range. You're doing so, good on that. I'm not going to yeah. remember all the prices on, on what I got mm -hmm. going on. To keep things rolling, rolling, rolling. This is one that I didn't have that you brought in, and we even did a blind on this. Um, this is the e. H. Colonel E.H. Taylor single barrel, and it's got a real high proof. No, no, it's just bottle. 50s, bottle and bond. Um, blind. I felt like this was, um, I picked up rye notes on it. I, I remember even uh, thinking, you know, this feels like a, uh, an Elijah Craig, and I really enjoyed it. And it's this, I do remember, is like 50 bucks. As a no, guy, I thought it was no, 50. You no, bought it. so No, uh, when I bought this, it was I think it was 70. Ooh, okay. Uh, being the I'm single, wrong. being, being uh, the single barrel though in E.H. Taylor. Yeah. Um, I think you're lucky to find them for 70 anymore. Not too much My more, fault, but probably still yeah. great and affordable. And I, I really enjoyed this one and it was a nice experience blind. I know it doesn't lay out its exact mash bill, but I remember just a lot of those. I picked up some rye notes. Now, oh, yeah. I don't know how, you know, but I mean, I really enjoyed this. I remembered it slightly wrong as its value, but it's still a no. great quality. Yeah. Quality bottle. Yeah. Now I'll leave it up there because okay. I considered this one. Mm. Um, it was a single barrel. We had another single barrel, though, this year that I chose over it. Really? And I hated to do this because single barrels are so... There could be some variances. Mm. But I thought we had the new Riff single barrel, which I really liked. I was really surprised by this. It was our first uh, time to have the new Riff. Um, and I also considered, like I say, the Colonel E.H. Taylor single barrel, but I didn't. I, I chose new Riff over it. I think... Six. Yeah, just uh, being a newer distillery, I believe this is only like four or five years old. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> there may be a trend. Uh, and one reason I picked this was just to give a shout out to New Riff. I like what they're doing. Uh, this was really good. And this also is, um, this is, is nice. right around $50, if not sub $50. That is right? nice. Yeah. Wow, that's, <clears throat> how old does it have? An age? It's just like four years. Okay. Because I can pick up a little bit of youth, but boy, is it nice mm -hmm. and mellowed. Yeah, they're, they're doing some good things. A lot of reviewers feel the same, uh, what's coming out of New Riff. So now, like I say, this is the this is a New Riff single barrel offering. So there can be mm. some differences, but everything I've heard overall uh, nice. from everybody. That's really Newport, good. Kentucky. Yeah, very cool. nice. Good call. Well, nice. like I say, this was head to head in, when I was considering with the E.H. Taylor single barrel. Both really good, uh, good picks. You cannot go wrong at all. All right. Striker, the Andalusia Whiskey Company. This is out of Texas, and this is yet another example. Let me set it down so I'm not moving at all all over the place. I don't remember the ABV. Uh, da, 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 50% is what it says. This is another example of, in my opinion, what Texas is really nailing as a region. This has got... It's not like a peat smoke, but it's got this ashy smoke to it, this wood-burning stick thing going on. And I really, really like it. You want a little neck pull? You want neck no, pull it's okay. I'm, I'm still <laughs> sipping my You were eyeballing it. I was thinking, you know, turnabout's fair play. You can neck pull. Um, Actually, you know, I remember this one being good. I don't remember that much on the on the flavor profile with it. So it hits it know. hits some things on there that, I'm, and again, I'm not doing a direct compare or anything. But I like smoky whiskeys. This is not a peat, but it has that, it harkens for me. Yeah. You did it to mine. I did it. That's why I said turn about is fair play. Take a little neck pull. Mm, yeah. Yeah. I get some of that smoke on yeah. the The smoke's nose. there, and, and it just kind of yells Texas. It yells, you know, Lone Star. Or, you know, as soon as you uncap it, it should just go Lone Star like that. Mm. I want to try it now. Mm. Yeah. Um, Mm. It's definitely the Texas, yeah. Texas heat. A little bit of the mesquite, but mesquite the smoke or, or uh, say that sage. I get brush. some, yeah, sagebrush, but leather too. Yeah, and I think that leather is what makes me think a little bit because I like the tobaccos and leathers in my peats. It's definitely not like I, you can't compare that. I'm not comparing that. I'm just saying it feels Texas, and I like it. I like it a lot. 
So good. that is my whoop, number three, Andalusia Whiskey Company. And they're doing some cool things. We ran into them down at the uh, Bastards Ball. Mm -hmm. They were down there. Now, Bart and I don't discuss our top five. I don't know what's in his list. He doesn't know what's in mine. So, again, we're kind of lining up because I have a Texas whiskey at my number three. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. But I'm sticking with Iron Root. Yeah. Now, this is the Icarus. Yes. Um, which is a port and peated cat. They take their whiskey. They age it for a while in an export cask. They take it. They age it for a while in a uh, in a peat cask. Peat cask, port cask. Yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> Um, but everything that Iron Root is doing, I really love. Uh, I would have a bottle of the Icar mm. up here, which is a black bottle. It was for their fifth anniversary. Uh, but the Icarus you can find. It is out there. It's out and about. $60 range, $60, $70 range. That's good. Uh, the Hubris. It's that's really that's, good. That's your bottle, by the way. This is? It. Yeah, I grabbed it off of the shelves back there. That's why I didn't mind if you put your lips on it. <laughs> but... Uh, the Hubris, the Harbinger, uh, Promethean, all very good, very well done. Uh, whiskeys, they're doing different things with corn, experimentation with casks, yes. using only premium corns. Right, Nancy the Nose, as I like to call her, that's just me. All right, Nancy the Nose had set them up originally with a lot of their barrel selections, and learning how to pull things and move things. They're doing a lot on their own now. She still pops in, but... Uh, that's where we met Nancy. So yeah, mm -hmm. Iron Root. Whew, again, when you when you pop the cork, it should scream, "Hoo ya!" I'm just gonna make stuff up for each. That's day. Iron Root Icarus. Iron Root is phenomenal. All right, number no, two. Number two. Speaking of Nancy, the nose, Nancy Fraley. We say we just uh, we say that's her last name. Wow. Yeah. Oh yeah. <laughs> I've been enjoying this. I think you took a lot of hits off this. This is the Murray Hill Club special release. Uh, we had Nancy on a live show, Sunday live show. Uh, this is from uh, Joss Magnus and Company out of Washington, D.C. You'll see back here, always behind me, I usually have the cigar malt and then their, their more standard release. Um, and I really, really enjoyed this. Take a turnabout fair play. <laughs> Smooth. It's, it's, well, this it's a little one. complex. This has the, uh, is it the port or the sherry that's in there? I can't remember. Oh, this, this was finished in cider, cider and that's malt right. cask. Yeah, cider and malt cask. It's just got this cool, light kind of movement that moves through there. I need a neck pull that as well. Yeah, so I think annually they kind of do a special release mm -hmm. of the Murray Hill Club. Um, and last year was a different wine casking that they used, but the cider casks are involved so this year. So rich, though, and velvety. I think mm -hmm. I even had it in my notes, so I should be looking at that rather. Uh, it is a special release, 50% ABV. Um, I've got an Aaron Nancy, knock this out of the park. Velvet mouthfeel, <clears throat> rich, savory, and smooth, but I can't talk now. 55, 55%. <clears throat> a little bit higher. What did I say? 50. Oh, I got 55 on here. Maybe I said it too quick. 55. Yeah, very nice. So, um, yes, it's a little bit limited, but what I will tell you is Joss Magnus and company, check out what they've got going on if you see it. Um, I mean, they've got some really nice finishes in play. Mm -hmm. Doing good whiskeys. Definitely. Uh, my number two, Four Roses, Small Batch Select. I looked at this. Yeah. I looked at this because this uh, is the QEVS. No, I can't no, remember. Uh, no? no. Oh, yeah, that's right. Not the Q. Yeah, that's right. We did one of those this year, though. Sorry, I was looking yeah, at that. Right. Um, so the four rows, this was a, a, a broad release, a large release. Uh, it's available in a lot of areas. I have not seen this in Kansas, though. This particular bottle is from uh, the Dallas area. 52% uh, ABV. Uh, this was a blend of uh, several different aged whiskeys that they used. Um, actually, Kentucky Straight Bourbon Whiskey crafted from six unique bourbons. So they blended uh, Four Roses, all their own whiskey, but um, this is $50 range. I thought it was phenomenal. It really surprised me. Yeah. Um, now, is this one more? I thought I remembered this one being a little more oaky from just memory as memory serves. I'm trying. Oh, I'm glad you are, Will, if, if, <laughs> since you offered, sir. Otherwise, I was not going to try it. <laughs> uh, four Roses, though, you know, I really, I, I like, I think all their whiskeys. Let me try it. Oh, 
Isn't that what's okay. in there? No. Oh. Oh, that's your number two. Mm -hmm. That's right. That is good. Mm -hmm. No, that's not oaky. That's not really floral. Really sweet. Yeah. Smooth. Mm -hmm. Nice caramels. They're nice, just rich bourbon that's sweet notes nice. that come out with it. Very, very nice. But yeah. That's a smoother, lighter. At that does not feel like that ABV. No, no. It feels more like a 43. It carries that's how it well. Smooth. Yeah, that's yeah. how smooth that is. Wow. That's my number two. Thank you for offering the neck pull. You're number one. Boom. Number one. When I was uh, down in Denver, um, Whiskey Donger kind of turned me on to this and said, you know, they got this down here. And uh, I picked this up. And I think I'd had a sample, not of this exact bottle. I know this is rare as well, but they are doing great things. The first time I, s no, 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 they did not show up at the first Bastards Ball. Mm -hmm, and I don't right. think they were at the second one either. I don't think they were either. And I won't judge either. on that at all. I wish they would have showed up so we could have talked to them. Um, but Rich. Mm -hmm. Strong. I think the ABV is like way over the top on this one, if I remember right. And 68.5. Zero five. Yeah, zero five. Yep. Now, again, this one is a little bit, this is a barrel strength bourbon, and this is the uh, Master Distiller um, Dennis Todd single barrel hand select for total wine and more. By all means. No, it's uh, a barrel pull. This this was a good one. Again, this is a single barrel, and these are smaller releases. There was only like uh, 28 bottles out of this one. No, no, there was more than that one. 11 of 28. What the heck? Yeah. So, but the Ooh. thing is, this was for total. I've seen these in other you know, in specs, in totals. Uh, a lot of these single barrel picks are coming out. So, I mean, it's not like it's that rare. These are pricey, though. They these are, are like they $170. Are, yep. I believe that was $180. So, uh, velvet, thick, rich, long finish, spice, and little hints of coconut I get in there. Wow, wow, wow. I said Texas is on fire. So, here again, I know with that run, I actually thought there was more. 11 of 28. So I'm going to throw out the caveat. That's why it's 68%. They didn't water that B down. I bet. <laughs> That's why, again, so some people are going to be like, bah, you're putting it on your list and you can't get it. Only 28 people, blah, blah, blah. My point, though, again, is look at what Texas is doing. If you see one of these, take a shot on it. This, you know, I'm a little tight. Money wise. Mm -hmm. Dropping that much on this, but I was hearing good things, and Whiskey Donger had said, hey, man, hearing great things about this. They had two, and I was like, get two, all right? And I met him when, when I was down at the Cast Thief, and then there was some arranging. Um, it is good. Take that. You got two of them? No, no. He got one. Oh. I wish I had two of them. I would have done two of them. Uh, Bart was in the middle. This is his number one. Number one. one. And Garrison the memory brothers. card filled up. It shut off. We didn't know it. We're yep. back. We needed like alert, alert. We yeah, need your number one. I know. You would think it would tell you. We're not recording. Um, but real quick, and it, because it probably got cut off. Yeah. Uh, this is a good pick. I remember this. Thank it was you, yeah, uh, it very, I mean, it's got a lot of flavor, a lot of, of uh, good bourbon profile that's packed in there. This is a, you know, it's a single barrel. Now these are of it. So this was from Total Wine, and there was only like twenty-eight bottles of this yeah. from that particular bottle at right. Total Wine. Now right. I've seen these though at Specs. I've seen them at Total Wines, uh, probably other places as well online. They are pricey because I mean they're coming in. This is a hunt. What one hundred and seventy dollars bottle? Yeah, I think I paid one eighty. And uh, but on the other hand, it's worth it. It is so good. <laughs> it is now. Would I buy a case of it? No, I suppose. I mean, if I Not had the resources. I owned, if I owned a football team. Well, yeah. <laughs> then I'd but, be like, give me a case of every single bottle that Garrison Brothers does. That's what I want. Make it happen. I'd have my own personal assistant. <laughs> it, I mean, that's a good pick for your number one. I think I only had it the one time over here when we reviewed it, so I didn't really uh, think to have it in my top five. Right but. That. What my number got? one is, where's it at? Work. It's in my box here somewhere. You got it. Find it. it. Find it. I'm sticking with uh, 
a Grand Whiskey Advocate, the really? Diggle 13-year bottled and bond. Wow. Now, why do you have to reference the Whiskey Advocate? Uh, whiskey Advocate had this as their number one as well. They did. Now, when I bought this, so this came out, this 13-year bottled and bond, George Dickel. Uh, this was sub $40. This was mm -hmm. like a $37, $38 bottle. When it came out, it was not available in Kansas. I had to order it online. I got it. I was blown away from it. By it. Blown away from it. Blown right. away by it. By it. From the first sip. I mean, it's it's Tennessee maple charcoal filtered. Mm -hmm. It's 13 years. It's bottled in bond. That maple charcoal filtering is on the palate. It's strong. There's good oak. There's mm -hmm. cherries. I get so much flavor in this. Now, you didn't care for it because it you thought it was oaky. Oaky, a little Yeah, oaky. a little oaky. I love that it's Cascade Hollow Distillery, Tula, Tullahoma, Tennessee. Love that. But yeah, to me, it's, it, it came off a little oaky, but that's just me. If you love the oak, you're really going to like it. I'm not as much into liking those wood flavors. See, I don't think it's as much the oak as it is the maple charcoal okay. filtering that's Could coming be. through. Could be, but um, you know, there like, is a lot I even like that. the old Jack Daniels number seven, so I'm not biased yeah. against at all. And, and one thing also to me is that here's here's from Dickel, a large distillery, one of your big boys, 13 years, it's bottled in bond, and it was sub $40. They could have easily said, hey, let's throw $100 on that bad boy. And I mean, the thing is, with you know with today's market, secondary market, who knows what would happen? But to make this thirteen-year-old offering at this for for sub forty dollars to me was was a great choice. Um, I applaud them for that. Here's the only thing I'll say. Now I know it's not them, but let's say somebody I don't know hired McConaughey. <laughs> okay, just just somebody, Michael McConaughey. Is it Michael? <laughs> Uh, Matthew. I know. It's Matthew McConaughey. You don't know. You messed up. I know. I even have a, uh, a nephew named Matthew McConaughey. Oh, okay. Just Matthew, not McConaughey. Oh. But let's say instead of Matthew mm. McConaughey, they ran a little short of money, and they were like, let's hire the dummies. Here's what I want. I want a dummies warehouse, all right? You can even have what all you right, call it. All right, all right, Yeah. You call it Scott's Corner. Scott's alcove. I don't care what you call it. That's where you put your favorite barrels. Maybe that's the warm part of the warehouse. Maybe that's the part that has the best breeze. I don't know. What? No. What are you looking for? Well, no, while you were talking, I was going to line up my no. bourbons. And well, we put, them up. All, we, we put them up. Because we got we done filming. Them. Right. <laughs> all I'm saying is you could hire the dummies. We might dip this entire bottle in yellow wax and then put... The dummy stamp of approval on it. Don't hit me back. All right. Well, I hope your hand's okay. Did that hurt you? <laughs> ah, that was good. I didn't expect that. All right. All I'm saying is you can put out some unique bottles. You don't necessarily have to have unique personalities. I just want the dummies. You know, I like them. I like it when the big boys do... Would you call them the big boys? Though? Dickle? They're more like the medium boys. Dickle? They're not Jack. They're not Beam. They're they're the middle they're, boys. You know, actually, I mean, I don't know, but I, I would refer to them as one of the big boys. Think they're of not any an liquor, independent any store. liquor store you go into, they're, they're going to have some of the Dickles. I agree. I will agree with that. You know, um, there's Dickel number seven, Dickel number twelve, mm -hmm. um, probably even lesser than that. But well, they've I don't got know, the red doing. They've got from MGP. I like yeah. that too. That's but I mean, there's a. I, I, I would say Dickel's one of the big boys. Maybe maybe it's medium slash okay, big. Got it. I don't know. Got it, got it, got it. Um, and like when Jack Daniels does the single barrel barrel proof. Huge boys. Yeah. We call it the double barrel. Yeah. Um, Tastes like banana. Corn. The heritage barrel, which I just picked up not too long ago because it just showed up in our area. I mean, that's a good bottling, good offering as well from Daniels, one of the big boys. But I like it when, uh, when the big guys are, are doing uh, different stuff. Well, I like to see, I want to see more of it. Okay. And I love what Texas is doing. Okay. Texas is knocking the socks off of it. They are what I will call the first region of North America, the Texas region. Yeah. I feel that's happened, and I feel there's going to be more. Bring it. Bring it, folks. Texas. Mm -hmm. Texas has their own whiskey tour. It takes you like five months. Because Texas is big. <laughs>
Scotch it. Wow, that was real high. Scotch it. Scotch it. You Scotch gods. Solange. Dummies. <laughs> I was like, scotch it! I was like, ah!